Hello people and welcome to another Planetside 2 video. I hope you're doing good. My name is Matthias and game update number 11 is out and a couple of things have changed. I will be starting with uh, some of the changes made on the Vulcan, one of the secondary options for the Prowler. Now it has been buffed, I'm not really sure how much to be honest but uh, let me also clear out one thing, I am not going to be focusing on numbers or statistics because uh, first of all there are a lot of other people that cover that and me for one think that these uh, numbers are more misleading than they are actually helpful. Especially in Planetside 2 I find that these numbers do not in any way reflect combat effectiveness, but that's just my opinion. So if that is something you're looking for then I'm sorry this video might not be for you. The Vulcan have always been very good at close range versus other vehicles and uh, pretty Pretty bad at the long range. Now this is one of the things that remains the same. At range like this, shooting at a Sunderer, you're not gonna do very much damage and uh, you might as well just hold your fire to uh, get closer without them noticing you. Another thing that the Vulcan has been known for is that it's pretty uh, ineffective against infantry. Again, this is something that remains the same. It is possible to get a few kills on infantry players, but in any situations where you do get a kill on an infantry, you would probably yeah, have done be... that easier and faster with basically any other secondary weapon of uh, the Prowler. So now, with the first few shots of uh, the Vulcan, you actually have a quite decent uh, accuracy. And if you fire upon infantry players like this, you uh, need to burst fire almost the same way as you would do with a regular infantry weapon. But uh, this is the type of situations that this weapon was made for, and at this type of situation it is also very good. Now if you pick this weapon for your secondary in your prowler, you are going to find yourself in situations where this weapon isn't really made for, and it is very good if you can find a way to use it as best as possible even at the longer range for example, and also against the infantry players as you saw me do earlier. So I have done a little bit of testing with this weapon in VR and uh, just want to let you uh, see some of the results I got. And like I said with the bursting, this is what I found to be the most effective way when you fire at long range or at infantry players. I also tried to fire fully automatic but uh, I did not have a very much success doing that. So now being that range is a very big deal when it comes to the Vulcan, I'm gonna try to be just a little bit more specific about at what range I am doing these tests. Now as you can see the crosshair tightens up very quickly and you don't have to wait uh, for more than uh, half a second or even less than that before you fire the next burst. So now this is my result firing fully automatic at a max at the range of about 120 meters. Now at this range I don't see much reason burst firing on a stationary vehicle. Uh, as you can see here I uh, have a hit mark with almost all the bullets. And uh, just to let you know the upgrades I have here is the uh, magazine size. You drove uh, drew up on the right side? Yeah yeah there yeah, it is. I see it. Yeah, up Let's on the go. right side, up on the right yeah, side. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, up on the right side, up there, up <laughs> right, <laughs> northeast on the road. Follow the road, yeah, where? drive fast. Where? Go, you go, guys go. are like you're, play, you're driving a rally. <laughs> you're like the navigator. Yeah. Oh, oh, up watch up. out, it's the right pushback. 
turn. What? It's a friendly tank. Yeah, yeah Sky Guard doesn't stand much of a chance against a main battle tank with the Vulcan and armor so piercing rounds. Now, even though the uh, Vulcan is extremely effective at close range versus any type of a vehicle, I would still prefer the Hellbird myself. There will be a few yeah. links in okay. the description below this video the, where you can see me using uh, the Halberd with Chun as the tank driver using armor piercing rounds. And even though we have a very bad position here, had I been using the Halberd here, I would They're most likely have been much uh, more successful versus these <laughs> infantry players. <laughs> and uh, yes, there are uh, specific so anti-infantry weapons for the... Uh, for all the main battle tanks, but I prefer to be focusing on uh, anti-vehicles when I'm in a tank myself. And then I try to adapt to any given situation as best as I can to use the tank as uh, a multi-role uh, vehicle. Spotted an enemy heavy! Oh, watch out, uh, Mark. Enemy heavy, spot it. If, uh... Ah, just uh, get in. Get away. Yeah, there's too many. It's, uh, it's the Jester's also. They are quite organized. Yeah, they Very are. Very organized, actually. What, how can he be walking up on the... Yeah, graphic Why is he fucking loser shooting at me again? Why am I fucking... Seriously. ...playing with no FPS? Ah, Another one. Oh, never mind. He's dead. Nice. I'm gonna hailstone. Ooh, you saved that power there. Yeah, and he thinks I was team killing him. No. No, he didn't. He said oh, thanks. No, he said thanks. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was worried he was gonna start shooting at us. You're <laughs> so sneaky, Chun. You're such a bad boy. I am. Hello there. Nice to meet you. Enemy engineer in the area. Enemy Sunderer in the area. <laughs> I'll repair it. Those situations, the Vulcan is very good. Yeah. Yeah, you should have seen my aim in that situation, too. You would have been so fucking proud. Yeah, you should, should make a down. video all about that. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Wait, you. Wait. I did record it. Just to impress <laughs> you and your family. Now the Vulcan is only one of the many changes that has been made in game update number 11. I'll uh, try to cover a few more things about it. And aside from uh, the usual lags that we seem to be getting for every major update, we also had a quite significant nerf to night vision. Now I haven't been using night vision for infantry for a while, but um, I haven't really found something that I'm really happy about uh, to replace it with. For example, the 3.4 times magnification has had a tendency to make me lose focus at things that are close by. At the same time, I have also had a lot of success with this scope. So if you have <laughs> been uh, comfortable with <laughs> the uh, night vision scope, you uh, may need to try to find yeah, something else right now. Like but that. don't underestimate the like iron sight. It is actually quite good. And I've used it for a long time yeah, with a variety of different weapons. And I will try to cover scopes a little bit more in a future video. So now all the changes that have been made in this update has a very little impact compared to the massive lags that I get, especially when I'm recording. And uh, this is something that affects me, especially in two types of playstyles. And uh, these are the two types of playstyles that I like the most, which is infantry gameplay and flying. Now, when I'm in the tank and when I'm in a max suit, uh, I do have sometimes even more frame rate drops, but it just doesn't affect me as much. And that's because infantry gameplay and flying requires you to have a quicker and more precise aim on your target. Not always, of course, but uh, for most of the situations and for the preferred playstyles that I like. Now, there are, of course, exceptions to this for both playstyles. And uh, with infantry, it is, uh, for example, when you use either a shotgun hey, or uh, like oh, what you're going to see here, here as I get killed by a noob tube. Now, as an ESF pilot, uh, taking out the groups of people with the rocket pods doesn't really require a very precise oh, aim either. But regardless so of whether or not you're using the rocket pods, 
you still need to be able to quickly maneuver. It's very easy to just crash into the ground if you have uh, frame rate drops, which is what normally happens when you get close to the ground. Now, when you are fighting air to air uh, and you are forced to lead the target, for example, in this situation, you really need to have your frame rates with you. Otherwise, it would be really hard to hit. Now, there was somebody who asked me why I change my graphic settings when I get into an aircraft after I've been on the ground and vice versa. And uh, the reason for that is uh, visibility. In this case, I have forgotten to do that. And as you can see, the traces are really blurry and really hard to... Uh, uh, lead the target by uh, watching where the tracers are going because I really can't see them that well. Now uh, the settings I have here is for infantry where I use uh, graphics quality on high and I have motion blur on low. Everything else actually is also on low even though for infantry sometimes I have had uh, some settings on medium as well. Now at certain situations and certain angles also certain ranges it doesn't really matter. In this case, I got the jump on the site pilot and uh, it was a very unfair fight. This is uh, another unfair fight. And I'm sure you can clearly see how unclear actually the uh, traces are here. And it really makes it hard to lead your target with this lack of visibility. Here I have changed the settings. I have turned the graphic settings or graphics quality to medium. And I have raised the motion blur to high. As you can clearly see here, the traces are much more visible and it's easy to lead the target. Now for me this doesn't change my performance, but uh, what really does change my performance and my FPS is that in this case I was flying closer to the ground and uh, much closer to the battle. I also uh, switched to thermal for both rocket pods and uh, rotary, because uh, as the night vision has been nerfed uh, it is no longer a viable option. Eyes on enemy aircraft! <laughs> oh, you stole my kill, bitch! And I... <laughs> did you die? Uh, yeah, yeah, when I touched the gear, I did. Yeah, I, but I, it was so worth it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I did team damage on you. Awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. So aiming while laughing, not the best idea. Anyway, this is kind of what the night vision looks like now. Oh, lovely. And uh, I much rather prefer the uh, thermal. Could use some ammunition. <laughs> I need ammunition. So now I know I brought this up before, but some people might have missed it. Thanks. Any aircraft will uh, be able to resupply at an ammo sunderer. And uh, the main benefit of that is that at some areas but it I will be like quite far for you to go to like resupply you and you might uh, be back in battle years, faster if you can have a well-placed like Sunderer to resupply so at. Well. So now I know there was a lot of more changes that was made in this latest update. I don't think I will have a chance to cover them all, but I'll probably bring a few more of them up as time goes by. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'll reply to them as best as I can. Now, I haven't been able to test the uh, nerf that has been made to the bursters or any of the other changes that was made to the uh, max units. I know that the new abilities well, like uh, Zoe and uh, also the uh, deploy mode Definitely. of the TR Max has been nerfed. Uh, I'm okay, sure there that's... are a lot of people that have opinions Leave about it, uh, both negative and positive. Okay, maybe vehicle. Oh shit, yeah, yeah. Now I'm sure there's a lot of people that are concerned that air is going to be completely dominant and overpowered again. Personally, as a very Hopefully. experienced pilot, I kind of feel like I'm doing a lot oh, better in a right. tank. But it's a little bit too early to tell yet. At the yeah. release of this video, uh, the update has only been out for about a day. So anyway, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching. And oh, what uh, the hell? please let me know what you think. So uh, that's all. Bye for now. Party!